Hi, everybody. This is Deanna here. If you can hear me, can you just drop a little question or a hello in the question bank, or you can wave your virtual hand at me just so I can make sure everyone can hear me uh, loud and clear? Great. All right, it looks like everyone can hear me. All right, we are gonna go ahead and get started. My name is Deanna, as I said. I am the Director of Product Training at Worldbook, located in Chicago. Um, in my previous life, I was a classroom teacher in Chicago for about 15 years, so I think that puts me in a really good spot to talk to you guys about how we can really use this database effectively with your patrons and um, younger and older patrons who come into the libraries. Before I get started, I want to allow um, your representative, uh, Rob, to say hello. So he is going to say hello really quickly, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Hi everyone, this is Rob Gertzen. I have been with Worldbook for 15 years and I cover Nevada and have worked very closely with the state of Nevada on the statewide Worldbook Online account. Um, I do a lot of trainings actually in Clark County um, down in Las Vegas, but I appreciate Deanna taking the time to do this today to help all of you and just wanted everyone to know that I am available if you ever need me for anything. And uh, Sulan knows how to reach me, so if you need to find out how to reach me, um, you can find out my contact information from Sulan if needed. Thanks, and Deanna, uh, on to you. All right, thanks, Rob. All right, so um, a few housekeeping notes before we get started. I will be sending a recording of this um, to Sue Lynn and to each of you who registered uh, as soon as we are finished recording. So please feel free to share that with anyone who is interested or you think might find this helpful. I know Sue Lynn is also going to have that on your uh, YouTube server as well. Um, number two, please feel free to interrupt me at any time with questions in the question bank. I will try to answer them uh, the best to my ability. If I cannot answer them, I will certainly get the answer for you. As I said, I taught for many years, so I am used to being interrupted. Nothing will throw me off, I promise. Okay, so our goal today is really to really go in depth in these top four databases. These are our core databases. And then I'm going to touch upon the bottom row, which are some supplemental databases, which also have um, some really great resources for you guys to use with your patrons. We're going to go in order from Early World of Learning, which is for our pre and emergent reader, all the way up to World Book Advanced, which is for your high school and adult patron. So again, feel free to drop questions for me. We're going to go ahead and get started and jump into Early World of Learning. So as I mentioned, this is for your pre and emergent reader, a great resource to right. let um, families who come into the library looking for uh, reading with their younger emergent readers, let them know that they have access to. It is built upon these five larger modules and a smaller classic section. Hold on one second. There you go. Everybody should see my screen now. Sorry about that. Thanks for letting me know. Okay. So we're going to start here in Great. early world of learning. I'm going to turn my volume down because everything is uh, read out loud to me for that emergent reader. We're going to start and read here which is broken down into two sections, Treks, Travels, and Welcome to Reading. These are both uh, really heavily great for kids who are learning how to read, but have two very different purposes. So Treks, Travels is 12 different stories, also available in Spanish. These stories are at a pretty high lexile. So if this was a physical book and it was pulled off the shelf, um, a child might have trouble reading it on his or her own, especially if they're just learning how to read. So this is a really great substitute for a picture book or, or a lap book, great for reading it on the go on a device. These are also available in Spanish. And each of these 12 stories we follow Trek, who's our world book mascot. We follow him around the world as he learns these different essential topics like shapes and colors and sound. 
And he also learned some important social emotional lessons like making friends and problem solving. Uh, I'll show you uh, the inside and let you listen to a few pages so you get an idea. I can manually turn the page or I can press play in the middle and that will play it for me. Trek learns to fly. Trek was a scarecrow. He was made from three strong poles. One long pole and one short pole helped him stand firm in the ground. Another pole made his arms. Okay, that just gives you kind of a taste. It has a male and female narration, obviously human, and it also has some nice diverse accents. Sometimes there's a fun Australian accent in there as well, which is kind of fun to stumble upon. What? Welcome to Reading, on the other hand, is a guided reading program. So this is actually where you'll want to send these patrons who are looking for a specific program um, to do with their kids or great for library programming purposes as well. Uh, there are 12 stories in each level, level A through D on the right here. And as the child progresses through each 12 stories and goes through the mini lessons, which I'll show you momentarily, they go from level A to D. And that is part of the, Lex the Lexile framework. So I'm gonna show you what a level A1 looks like and then we'll go into the D12. So we'll look at the very first one and then the very last one. Trek and his friends. Trek's friends are lost. Where is Wagtail? Here I am. I am not lost. Okay, I think that gives you a really good idea. Very low lexile, not a lot of text on the page. And if you continued, there'd be a lot of repetition. And if we go to D12. Lend a hand. I'm gonna go right to the second page. You'd be surprised at all the things you can do to lend a hand. Here are some things you can do all by yourself. You can help your... Okay, so you can see there still a lot of that repetition that's necessary for, for our emergent reader, but a lot higher of a lexile, some multisyllabic words in there, and higher vocabulary. Now I like to start with read because I wanna show you guys where to find those lesson plans to share with your patrons. So at the bottom we have for educators at the footer, and we're gonna go to educator tools. And here at the top of the screen, we have our Trex Travels logo and our Welcome to Reading logo. If we click on Trex Travels, we can scroll down and get some information about uh, that childhood, those childhood themes and the different lexiles. But to the left, each of those 12 stories comes with its own lesson plan. So suggested skills and concepts, um, vocabulary, pre and post reading questions. There's even some cross-curricular correlations in here because Trek is traveling around the world. Uh, great discussion questions. And it will also connect you to the games and the print and do activities that are associated with this game in our database. I'm gonna show you those in a moment. If you click on Welcome to Reading, you can scroll down and get more information about those Lexile levels. And each of those 12 stories, excuse me, each of those 12 stories in each level now has its own mini lesson. So I can click on Trek and his friends. And here is my specific mini lesson. You're focusing on the short vowel A sound, sight words, because now we're becoming stronger, more confident readers. Each welcome to reading book has a fun little foldable mini book, which is great for make and take. Uh, or to send home. My Wi-Fi seems to be moving a little slowly, so bear with me a moment. Let's try that one more time. It usually works for me right away. That's how to make it. All right, well, we'll move on. They're very cute colorful, foldable books that the kids come with directions so the kids can print those out um, and take those home and continue practicing. 
Now, the rest of the modules are loosely based around the stories that we've just read in Trek's Travels and Welcome to Reading. So I want to show you very quickly around the rest of the modules. They're pretty self-explanatory. If you spend just a few minutes in them, I, I think you guys will understand. So the first uh, to the way right is our print and do. These are printables based upon those stories that we just read and those essential childhood themes. So for example, if you just read the Trex travel story about color, you can choose from any of these handful of printables. You can download these or print these. They're also available in Spanish as well. So these are great extensions and take home activities. And of course, this drop down allows for all of those 11 childhood themes, including time, which is something I know my fourth graders definitely struggled with as well. If you want to go back to the homepage in any of our databases, you just click on the logo and that will take you right back to the homepage. Play are these four games that we are all familiar with from our childhood concentration multiple choice games. These again are based on those Trex travel stories that we read. So for example, and put the story in order, they have just read or listened to a perfect pet. And now to kind of test their comprehension and to work on their sequencing, they have to drag these events to put them in order. Of course, it encourages them to read the story first if they haven't already and to check their answers. And everything is read out loud, um, including the directions and the captions. I have all of that um, muted so that it's not shouted above me. Let's see, we have Watch, which is a compilation of real short videos. As you see, when we go through our database, you'll see this great visual dig that we have. Um, a patron or a student finds something that they're interested in learning more about and it takes them to a nice short video for their short little attention span. The Venus's flytrap is a meat-eating plant. Its leaves look like jaws. When an insect such as this grasshopper walks inside a flytrap leaf, the two parts quick read. As an educator, I really like to specifically point out from the video section, the big ideas section. These are really great, short, colorful lessons based on those foundational skills we all need as readers. Um, I know that when my fourth graders came back from spring break or summer break, they often forgot the difference between a vowel and a consonant or a prefix and a suffix. And these are some real short, cute videos I could have used to reinforce that topic. Certainly, these can be used to introduce a topic, great for interventions as well, or you can download the video and send it home so that um, parents have access to that as well. Know It serves as an introduction to our visual encyclopedia. It has that same visual dig idea. We're gonna go into animal safari and we'll look at the cheetah, for example. If I pressed play, this short expository text would be read out loud to me as well as these captions. So a great introduction to nonfiction text features. The only thing that is not read out loud in this entire uh, early world of learning database is it's a fact. Not to be neglected is this cute little frog in the bottom right hand corner who turns into a prince when you click on him. And he takes us to our classic section where we have access to songs that we are familiar with um, from growing up. All of these songs are sung by young kids, sometimes with fun UK accents. And the audio is downloadable and the words are displayed on the screen and tracked. Here is an example. <laughs> Okay, we know how that song ends, so we're not going to watch the whole thing. Similar, similar idea here with nursery rhymes that we're familiar with. And the last thing to point out in Early World of Learning is Story Corner. If you look at the lesson plans that I showed you from our For Educators tab, 
each of these stories are extensions upon the social emotional themes that we visited in Trek and his friends. So it will specifically tell you which story you can come to as an extension. Now these are much longer stories at a higher lexile, uh, great for a listening center or to download the audio, use it kind of as a modified podcast for kids uh, or a you know listening story or for listening time, excuse me. But you can see it's very, very text heavy with not a lot of um, pictures for those young kids. Okay, I am going to cruise into World Book Kids, which is our next core database. Unless there are any specific questions about uh, early worlds of learning, Okay, so World Book Kids is a ideal database for your elementary school learner. He or she is now reading independently. We don't love to put grade levels on here. We all know that not everybody is reading at the level they are supposed to, so you might certainly have a sixth grader who is a struggling reader or an English language learner who could really benefit from the lower lexile available here. Um, also, keep in mind that moving forward, each of our core databases is going to be quite consistent. As the patrons and the students grow, we want them to grow with our databases so that they will have some familiarity uh, with the searches and with the content and the different features as they grow. With each of the databases, as we move forward, you'll see a features bar. In World Book Kids, it's nice and kind of gamified. It looks like a, a bit of a video game for those young elementary school kids. We're also, each of our databases is built on this beautiful carousel of images, really meant to spark curiosity and inquiry in, in students. So if they wanted to learn more about airplanes, for example, they could just click here and go right to the content on airplanes. We also have a search bar, of course, in each of our databases. In World Book Kids, we have an explore bar that is that visual dig. So if you have someone who's not really quite sure what they're looking for, they, they're really interested in animals, so they're gonna go to living things, and they'll stay with animals, but you know they don't really know, but they really like spiders and arachnids. So from here, they have seven different articles that they can choose from. So they narrowed it down from the, I'm not really sure what I wanna research to only have in seven different articles to choose from. Of course, they can do an advanced search. I'm in the upper right-hand corner. You can search by Lexile or you can do a Boolean search. And we also have access to different pictures and videos based on that content of spiders and arachnids. If a student knows exactly what they're looking for, they can use the search bar. It's got a great intuitive feel to it a la Google with a predictive search engine. So we'll look for China, for example, which is a nice broad topic. I have about 200 articles here on China. If I were to Google China right now, I'd have over 3 billion articles and they certainly would not all be at an elementary lexile, nor would they be relevant to our elementary level patron who comes in and to our libraries or who's using our resources. We also have um, a ton of maps and videos and multimedia as well associated with that search. So we'll look at the very first article and I'll give you a feel for what our content is going to look like as we go through the databases. So I'm gonna talk about these tabs at the top of the article in, in, in a little bit, but first we'll scroll down. So you can see that all the multimedia is on the left, including any audio, and images and video that we have. You can click on any of the images to enlarge them. Of course, these can be saved with a right click or drag down to your desktop and used uh, for different presentations. You can also print them. On the bottom right-hand corner, there's a little white arrow that allows you to print it and get your photo credit as well as a caption. A lot of our articles have World Book Explains videos embedded in them. I want to show you a short clip of that and then I'll explain it to you.
Hi, I'm Latham, and I'm 16 years old. And I'd like to know, who was the first Chinese emperor? My name is Wen Huang. I'm a journalist and a writer. Who is the first emperor in China? So what happened is we had our customers, patrons and students bring questions to us at World Book and we went out into the field to um, experts in the field to answer those questions for us. Sometimes it's our expert editorial, editorial people at World Book who are answering those questions as well. I just think that's a really interesting way to kind of change up some rote learning. When we get down to the bottom of the article in Nevada, you guys will see these two toggles. The first toggle is for that student or patron who's seeking information at a higher lexile or who's seeking more content. That will take them directly to World Book Student. If they want to toggle back to World Book Kids to go back to the lower lexile, they would just use their search browser back arrow to come back. Likewise, if they are looking for information in Spanish, if you have an English language learner or someone who's looking for information in their native language, of Spanish or someone who's doing research in Spanish, they can click here. And if we have that article available in Encyclopedia Estudiantil Hayascos, which I like to call EEH for short, they can just toggle, oh, click on that, and that will take them directly to their article in EEH in Spanish. That article will be a parallel translation. It looks a little bit different. The multimedia is on the other is on different sides of the page, but you will have all of the same sharing and collaboration tools that I'm gonna to show you in a moment. At the bottom of this page, I can quickly toggle right back to World Book Kids. Also at the bottom of the article, I don't know if you saw, but that is one way you can always grab the citation in MLA, APA, and Harvard format. Now I wanna to touch upon the tabs at the top of the screen because these tabs are consistent throughout each of the databases moving forward. The first tab to the left is the article. The second tab as we move to the right is a compilation of all of the multimedia. The third tab is our more information tab. So this will pull up all of the other articles in our database associated with our China search any activities or games that are on our features bar that are associated with our search of China, as well as any lesson plans. Many of our articles end with uh, comprehension questions, great for holding students accountable for their learning um, or for that struggling student who really needs that extra push in comprehension. And the last, uh, at the bottom, the last link is a quick link to your content standards. Now it will automatically geolocate you to Nevada for your state standards, but we also have access to IB standards, uh, NGSS standards, and Common Core standards as well. The tabs on the top right of the screen are helpful as well. The first tab is going to give us our Lexile level. Many of our articles are Lexiled and it will also give you a uh, linkable table of contents. And to the right, this tools, this gear that you see is our tools dropdown. And this is how you will save and share your data. Uh, this is going to be the same anytime you see this gear icon. So it, all of our content can be downloaded as a PDF. It can be saved via Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive. It can be shared via Google Classroom or emailed as a PDF. Another way to grab your citations and print your content. All of our content can be translated in over 100 different languages. And our content can also be read aloud in English in each of our databases. Now, it's also important to know that in EEH, some of that content does have Spanish read aloud as well. Okay. I am going to go back to our home screen to go over a few of my favorite features from the features bar. World of Animals is a favorite of elementary school students. They love animals, and this is a great way to engage them in 
first research and second really comparing and contrasting so we'll look at reptiles for example and we're going to compare uh let's compare the cobra and the boa constrictor so i can select the cobra and from here i can go directly to an exhibit on the cobra or the cobra article the exhibit will pull up some great quanti quantitative facts as well as any video or audio we have. So here's audio. And if I close that out, I can also select the boa constrictor for the right. And at the bottom of the screen, compare now. We'll pull up that information in a modified Venn diagram. So a really unique way to kind of look at these two reptiles. For example, you can see that the boa constrictor weighs a lot more than the king cobra. You can bring in some math. You can talk. And I love these visual cues as well. Um, it brings in social studies, geography, where these animals can be found, um, what foods that they eat, their habitats. So a lot of different um, information is provided on both of these and you can go one step farther and go right into the article but this is again a really great way to really introduce students to a topic that they're really engaged in to introduce them to research similarly on the features bar towards the bottom right we have compare places this is going to be almost exactly the same but now instead of comparing animals we're comparing states countries continents etc so i could compare Illinois to Nevada, for example, and it will pull up that similar modified Venn diagram. So really great if you are looking for information for state projects or country projects. We have a ton of activities and science projects in our database broken down into these different subtopics. So if I looked at the craft room, for example, we have a, a lot of different activities here. These were really intended to be done with that makerspace idea in mind. And I really like that they are linked to more information. And a lot of these have a lot of um, diverse cultural um, ideas to them as well. So this one is specifically about weaving mats and it walks the students through step by step. And these materials can generally be found very inexpensively around the house or school or library. Of course, anytime you see this gear icon on the right, that allows you to translate or share and save any of this. We also have science projects in that same vein, really meant to be done with um, inexpensive materials. Often they just require a pencil and a paper or a watch. The big differentiator here is going to be the discussion questions at the bottom. And I specifically know that my parents, when I was younger, would have appreciated how to do a science project, which really walks them through how to do that science fair project um, from the beginning all the way to presenting it. Okay, back on the footer on the bottom blue line, we're gonna go to the for educators tab. This is where we're gonna end with each of our core databases. The Educator Tools tab will take us to another way we can grab our curriculum correlations, any lesson plans associated with um, any of the games or activities that I showed you, and we also have access to a large number of web quests. I'm just gonna scroll for a second to show you uh, the different content that we have available, but I had a love-hate relationship with these web quests when I was teaching. Part of it was due to my lack of resources. I didn't have a database like World Book Kids, and part of it was due to my lack of due diligence, I think. I would simply Google um, a web quest and then send my students off onto the web, and often they would come across information that was at too high or low of a lexile, information that I wasn't sure was um, fact-checked, information links that weren't working. Um, it always kind of turned into a mess. These web quests are printable, and the answer keys are on the last few pages, and it takes the students on an expedition throughout World Book Kids, so we know that they're getting this factual authoritative information at a level that they understand. 
They're um, prompted to answer different types of questions. They have to watch videos and read articles and look at pictures. If I scrolled all the way down, you would see the answer key for this. Now these web quests are also available in WorldBook Student and Advanced. You're just gonna see the same content, but at a higher Lexile. I think most importantly, you should know about the very first web quest, which is research skills. And this teaches the students and patrons how to actually use the database. So it is a web quest through WorldBook Kids, teaching them how to actually use WorldBook Kids. So then when it's time for their research, they are ready to go. Okay, that is it for World Book Kids. We are gonna move on into World Book Student. Don't forget, I'm happy to answer those questions for you as we go, or if there's something you wanna see that I'm not showing you, please feel free to ask. I'm gonna give you a quick tour of our newly revamped homepage here, and then I'll show you what a China article looks like just so you can get a, a good comparison. So again, we open up to these great splash images. On the top right of the screen, we have our educator tool section. This is where you will find those web quests. It's also available on the footer. A quick link to Google Classroom. And our features bar is now on the top right hand corner. If you scroll down, you'll see behind the headlines and our biography center. Both of these I'm gonna to touch upon from our features bar in a moment. And underneath our search bar, we've pulled out a few of our favorite and most used resources from the features bar as well. So a search for China would pull up similar content just at a higher Lexile. You'll also see we have a lot more articles available here in World Book Student. We've moved from about 200 up to about 1,200. We'll look at that very first article. I'm not gonna scroll all the way down. You would get dizzy. It's quite a lengthy article, but we do have those same tabs at the top. All the multimedia is now aligned on the right-hand side of the page. I just wanna show you how the tabs are similar but have even more information available in them. So the very first tab now tells us that our Lexile measure has grown to a 1080. I believe it was at an 860 or an 890, still a linkable table of contents. Our multimedia is now compiled on a different page. all the tables and audio here. Of course, students can still save this in the same way via Google Classroom. They can also save it in what we call My Research. That is WorldBook's digital file folder. It's similar to Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive. And if a student or patron wants to create their own My Research account, they can easily do that by uh, signing up with their own unique username or password. And I'll show you that again a little short in a little. You'll see under the related tab, there is a lot more information here for those students than we had in World Book Kids. We also have access to these great back in time articles now. These are really great articles written in the time stated for our World Book Yearbook, and they touch upon important things that happened historically in that year in China. So this was actually written in 1922, and it talks about uh, the Civil War in China, for example. We have uh, a collaboration with EBSCO, so we have links to these different magazine articles based on our content search. And again, another way to grab your curriculum correlations. This gear provides us all with all of the same sharing and collaboration that we had available in World Book Kids. Okay, I am gonna go back to our features bar on our home screen. You can also grab it right here at the top. 
I'll show you a few of our differentiated features here in World Book Student. First of all, we have um, links to a great atlas and interactive maps. When I was teaching, I think I had a map from 1982 that was a pull-down map that was in the front of the room that only one or two students could really see clearly. Here we have great links to all of these different maps from around the world, and you can view the political map, the climate map, um, even an agriculture and fishing map. So a ton of different ways you can really look at this. So it's a, a, a great way to look at um, maps in the 21st century. Behind the headlines is a look at uh, current events. This is updated almost every school day. My favorite things to point out here are that first of all, sometimes it's off the beaten path um, current events. It's not necessarily um, what we would see screaming at us from the headlines, but it's also really important news that we should know about. It often commemorates different memorials or holidays or different events that happen throughout the world. We also have links throughout the databases. So if I wanted to learn more about India, for example, or the California State Park Commission, I could click there. Our editors do a really great job of taking um, some really complex science and social studies, even social topics, and really breaking them down into student-friendly language. For example, here is a short little article on, on gene editing that they really break down into understandable terms. All of these articles are archived um, from behind the headlines on the left-hand side. So if you're looking for a lot of current events on disasters or um, uh, anniversaries of disasters, you can click here and it will take you um, to all of those different articles. The Biography Center has recently been updated as well, so we are getting a great new look at it. The Biography Center opens up to uh, different famous historical figures who are celebrating their birthday on this day. You can also search specifically for biographies here if you are know exactly who you're looking for. As you scroll down, we have this great filter that allows you to filter down that information. When I was teaching, for example, maybe I'd be looking for um, astronauts and aviators, biographies on different astronauts and aviators, and I want both female and male. I can select those both and apply. And now I have access to 115 different uh, biographies on astronauts and aviators for my unit. I can narrow that down and take out the males, and now I have 22 different articles. So this is great for that kind of purpose, planning for units, um, seeking a lot of information on a specific uh, career or time period, also kind of a unique way to um, open up our students and patrons' eyes and differentiate their learning for them and take them out of their comfort zone. As I move down the features bar, we're gonna look at how to do research. This is kind of a one-stop shop for learning about how to do research and why. On the right-hand side, we have information for our educators and librarians and teachers, how to teach research in the 21st century with the ever-changing internet. And on the left-hand side, we have um, answers for students. Why do I need research? Why can't I just ask Siri or go to Google or Wikipedia or ask my dad? Um, also, how to plan your research from the beginnings all the way to presenting it. And we have some great student-friendly information provided along with some videos. Hello, my name is Glenn Warren. I'm the Vice President of California School Library Association. And I'm answering the question, uh, what is information literacy? Oh, that's a huge question. Let me just simply break it down into uh, the, the vowels, A, E, Okay, I'll leave you guys in suspense when he breaks it down into the vowels. But you can see that this is a really student-friendly way to look and to help you guys answer those questions that I know that we all get. 
All right, I am going to wrap up in World Book Student back at our educator tool section. Uh, the big differentiator here is going to be some great graphic organizers that you can download as PDFs. They can also be displayed on the whiteboard. And don't forget, you can grab your web quests here just at a higher Lexile. All right, I am going to jump into advanced. Please, again, don't forget to drop questions for me. Advanced is our database for our high school student. With that same feeling in mind, you might have a, a student who could benefit from the tools and features available in WorldBook Student, and they are more than welcome um, to that database as well. We're not gonna look for an article in China. I think you guys are pretty good experts now on what to expect and what those tabs would provide. Um, some of the big differentiators in World Book Advanced are in the headlines. This is breaking news in real time. So a real interesting way to have our high school and adult patrons and students get a look at um, what is going on around the world. And of course, this links you directly to that article in Reuters. Our features bar is still tucked into that upper right hand corner. You will see some carryover from World Book Student, of course, at the Atlas and behind the headlines. Um, we also here have access to the Citation Builder. This allows the user to create citations from all of these different types of sources, and we just updated this to include a lecture. Um, if they wanted to cite a book, for example, they just need to fill in the blanks, and that citation will be created for them in MLA, APA, and Harvard format. As you can see, we have another link to my research. That's the digital file folder. We have uh, Today in History, which is a, just a real fun look at birthdays and other events that took place throughout history. Uh, I know my students loved the kind of this idea from an almanac, so this is available to them in one spot. And here we also have access to world newspapers. These are quick links to newspapers around uh, Las Vegas. Um, these are uh, geolocated you, so we have access to um, the Las Vegas Review and the Nevada Appeal, so a really interesting way to kind of compare and contrast the headlines that are coming out of these two papers, or even the op-eds, are the um, are the headlines similar? Is the, is the reporting that you're getting similar? Does one slant further to the left or the right? You can take that one step farther and compare that to any newspaper um, across the nation. So we have access to the Washington Post as well. Take that even a step farther and you now have access to all of these different publications across the world. Um, so if you have patrons who are looking for news in their native language, you have access to that here as well, or you can continue um, really comparing and contrasting. So this week, for example, I think it would be fascinating to look at Turkish newspapers and to see how they're reporting what, what's going on um, overseas right now and to see how Washington, D.C. is reporting that. I think that would be very fascinating. Okay, we are gonna jump into the for educator section at the bottom of the, uh, the footer, back to educator tools where you'll see your curriculum correlations, the web quests again. The big differentiator here, um, will the Nevada Appeal and Washington Post links allow free access? I believe that you do have free access, Sulin, up to a point. I'm not sure how much free access you're provided. Teaching with documents is a really hidden gem here for your high school patrons um, and your teachers who come in. We know that they have to analyze primary source documents from American history. So here we have access to a plethora of those. We'll look at World War II, for example, which is my um, kind of favorite time of history to learn about. And we can look at a date which will live in infamy. This is FDR's first typed draft of his uh, speech the day after the Pearl Harbor bombing. So down the right, we have all of this student-friendly information and, and background 
info. And to the left, we can actually click on that image and see it enlarged. So you can see FDR's chicken scratch himself, which someone pointed out is a really cool aha moment that um, everyone has to edit, even the president, which I loved. Um, you can also see he crossed off certain words, like yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in world history became infamy. So that's a great discussion to have about word choice and the power of different words and how that enhanced his speech. You can come down and we have a handful of discussion questions and activities based on that one primary source document. So vocabulary in context, um, that word choice that I spoke of and other techniques he used to enhance the effect of his speech. They even have to compare and contrast this speech with others in our database as well. So plans for at least a week or two available right there for you on a ton of different resources. All right, we have covered each of our core databases. So I just wanna take a few minutes and walk you around the supplemental databases. We'll start in um, EEH, Encyclopedia Estudiantil Hayascos. I already showed you what that China article would look like. Um, students have a few different ways here to search for content. They also have quick access to these Spanish-speaking uh, newspapers around the world. World of Animals is available in Spanish, and they also have this great visual dictionary. So they can kind of, uh, we'll look at the teeth here. They can navigate here, and it gives them some great um, Spanish vocabulary as well as a quick toggle into English on a ton of different topics. Dramatic Learning is probably my favorite database that I would have used most when I was teaching. I taught a lot of English language learners um, and newcomers to the United States. This is gives you access to 42 different plays for all different grade levels, first through 12. Um, there are really diverse plays. For example, Cesar Chavez and La Causa, the Cherokee Trail of Tears, the Chinese Labor and Transcontinental Railroad. And as you can see um, down the middle, they vary in the number of characters. So great for library programming for smaller or larger groups and great for the classroom. And a ton of different um, cross-curricular correlations here as well. So not only do you practice language arts, but science, geography, philosophy, et cetera. I'll click into a play just to show you what one looks like. We'll look at Dieguito, the youth of Diego Rivera. Each play comes with a script, um, different skits and monologues, which is great for practicing English language skills. They also come with lesson plans and vocabulary, links into our database for further study. They also come with activities and mini inquiry projects. So after each play, you can do a mini inquiry project kind of based on the genre of that play, for example. You can see we even have Hamlet um, and mythology for fourth through eighth graders. So there's, there's even some Shakespeare in there written at that student-friendly language um, that you're exposing your students to as well as for the older students. You can get to all of that from the homepage. Uh, for example, the activities, all the monologues. They have some writing correlations in here, play starters. These are really fun ways to have, uh, to engage in creative writing. It kind of gives them prompts on, on how their play should start. Okay, the last database that we're gonna take a look at today is Timelines. This is one of our more customizable databases. It has 650 pre-generated timelines in it, so if you know exactly what you're looking for, you can pare down here on the left, or you can search for it here. So we will look for the history of Nevada. And this timeline will populate. 
Um, when you look at timelines, there are a few things you can do with timelines. You can use the already existing timelines to study history. You can edit these timelines or you can create a timeline of your own from scratch. If you do any personalization to these timelines, um, it will not be saved unless you save it up on the top right corner. And in order to do that, you need to log into your My Research uh, account. So I'm going to do that right now. So we have the history of Nevada on our screen from 1776 all the way until uh, 2010. Now we can, we know that more important things have happened in Nevada since 2010. So we can edit this and add to it. We can also edit any of these events. For example, uh, let's look here. In 1910, gambling became legal, illegal in Nevada. So here I can edit this event. This is all really intuitive and user-friendly for kids and adults of all ages. Um, you can add your own image or you can search for an image from our database. You can also add to the event description or add any specific notes that you might have and you can color code as well. So if I save this, you'll see that it is now going to be color coded in red. Now, I made my own timeline of my life. I will show you that. I'm going to go back to our home page. Go to my timelines. So I created this timeline um, from when I was born to when I started working at World Book earlier this year. And I also peppered it with uh, other events that happened throughout my lifetime throughout the world that kind of changed all of us as citizens. For example, um, the Space Shuttle Challenger explosion, the Berlin Wall being torn down. I even, anything that is color coded in red are world events and those are things that I found directly by searching the World Book database. You can even find multimedia. For example, here is the Berlin Wall multimedia. Before the Berlin Wall was built in 1961, as many as 1,000 people a day emigrated from East Germany to escape communist rule and seek a better standard. Now, I'll show you quickly how to create your own event or to add one from our timeline. To create an event, up at the top left, create event. Now, I could say, <clears throat> let's see, presented. for Nevada State Library, and I could color code that in red, and I'll put today's date, we'll say October 2018, and create, and now I have that here on my database, color coded in red. Or I can search from over tens of thousands of different events that already exist in our database. So I can go to search events, and I can search for uh, our new president, for example. I guess he's not so new. Trump, and it will pull up um, any event in our database associated with that word. I'm going to look for his election. And here it is in 2016. Plus, done. And now you see I have it added here to my database, and I can edit that as I'd like. So, so many different uses for timelines. Of course, checking out um, history and, and how history has unfolded, but also really great for biographies and autobiographies for library programming, studying and, and adding in, peppering in information that might not necessarily be in a textbook or vice versa. You can also track character change throughout a book. You could even track all of the different lessons that you do throughout the year or all of uh, the different read alouds, for example. All right, I want to wrap up today by taking you guys to the training guide. This has newly been revamped as well. This is where you can come for a ton of information on all of the resources available at WorldBook. We also have some video tutorials, a ton of different ways to promote your subscription throughout the Nevada State Library, um, including some great bookmarks that you can print up with your username and password, 
uh, brochures and posters. And I'm coming all the way down to the bottom because we have these great subscription letters that you can send home from libraries and schools to let users and parents know that they have access to these really great resources. And finally, I do public webinars throughout the week, which you are welcome to sign up for. I certainly know that you are busy working and we are on different uh, time schedule, time frames here, but you are welcome to register for those to learn about any of these other databases or educational initiatives. And I will be sure to send you a recording of that even if you are unable to attend. Okay, I am going to pull up my contact information for you. Of course, you can always um, contact your representative, Rob Gersten, as well. He is there to answer any of your account questions or help you with any print questions you might have. You can email me at training at worldbook.com. I'm also happy to provide any certificates for your attendance today. And be sure to check us out on social media so we can see what you guys are doing with your World Book Online resources. And so you guys can check out anything new and anything that we are providing for you guys. Thank you so much for coming today. I will stick around here for a few minutes to answer any questions if they come in. If not, I will have this recording off to you shortly. Have a really great rest of the week.